Good evening, everyone. Please scan the QR code and do the event check-in. This will give you access to additional resources and information about events that we are running on Reactor, which are around similar topics to today's session. Also, you will be able to access links from today's session. I will share the event check-in link and the QR code again with the event ID in the Q&A section shortly. Thank you all again for joining us today. My name is Rashmita and I'm the event planner for Microsoft Reactor. This session will run over the next 60 minutes, including Q&A. The session is being recorded and will be uploaded to our Reactor YouTube channel. I will share the link to our YouTube channel in the chat section soon. I would now like to welcome Aditya, our speaker for today's session. Aditya is a Microsoft Gold Learn student ambassador. MLH coach for tech communities and a senior student pursuing computer science and engineering from Amity University. He has worked in various technologies such as .NET, Microsoft Azure, etc. He has also been awarded as Azure Heroes, Community Hero and AI Ambassador. But for now, I will hand over to Aditya to begin the session. Over to you. Thank you so much, Rashmita. Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. Uh, first of all, a big thank you to all of you for um, joining us here, especially in a weekday with uh, work and academic schedules. I'm definitely very grateful to see you all here. Um, I am Aditya and I'm a Gold Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. I'm just going to get and share a little more about me um, in a second. Let me just bring up my screen once and I think that we can proceed. I hope it's visible now. Yes. OK, great, great. So once again, hello everyone. <laughs> Today the topic that we're going to take is building AI enabled applications with Xamarin and Azure. I am Aditya. I am a current final year student pursuing my computer science and engineering um, degree at Amity University Noida. I've been active with um, student tech communities and hackathon communities for the last couple, couple of years. And I've especially been working very regularly with Microsoft technologies such as Azure along with .NET. And I do stay active with our communities around as a Gold Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador as well as a member of the .NET Foundation. A few of my accomplishments um, in this space do include uh, being the national winner for the education category at Imagine Cup 2021, um, being a popular choice prize winner at the Microsoft Azure AI Hackathon, as well as a winner of the inaugural Visual Studio Code Hackathon. And you can always learn more about me at my personal website that has been mentioned below. So the agenda for today's session is that first we're going to talk a little about what Azure Cognitive Services are, um, what benefits Azure Cognitive Services have, why they really help us. I'll then talk about the categories of Cognitive Services uh, that you can utilize. Now, considering that this session particularly has will, will cover Face API as well as, I mean, a live use case of um, Face API with Xamarin. We're going to take that after we discuss all our categories and then lead towards a Q&A. In the middle, there, there will be a little surprise component of a solution at Build, which is a really fun little app, um, but that's going to come post the live demo. So that is really what we're going to be covering in the next one hour. So Cognitive Services are cloud-based services with REST APIs and client library SDKs that are available to help us build cognitive intelligence into our applications. Cognitive intelligence here really refers to intelligence, artificial intelligence that is that does intend to replicate human behavior. So that, that's essentially what cognitive intelligence generally is. And the biggest part about Azure Cognitive Services is that it allows you to add cognitive features to your applications without actually having AI, ML or data science skills. So that, that really makes it very convenient for developers like you and me to build AI enabled apps because I, for example, here right now, I work with .NET very regularly. I do play around with Azure. I have no idea of how to build uh, my own ML models or work with AI. And for folks like you and me, who like to build but aren't very deeply in, learned in the AI space, Cognitive Services is a great solution uh, to really help us out. 
the benefits of cognitive services are a you can create customizable uh, pre-trained models you know with breakthrough ai research because microsoft research is doing fantastic work with all of these technologies um, you can deploy cognitive services everywhere from your cloud-based solutions to you know the edge of course edge computing is another use case and you and you can do so with containers there it's very easy to get started quickly because as you use cognitive services you're essentially working with client based sdks or sd apis so you do not need ml or ai expertise and the one of the most important parts and benefits of cognitive services are that these have been developed keeping in mind very strict ethical standards in order to ensure fairer ai so those are some of the benefits of cognitive services now the five major categories or pillars of cognitive services are vision, speech, language, decision, and search. Now, as I mentioned earlier as well, that cognitive services are meant to replicate human behavior for us. So cognitive services literally help our applications see, speak, um, read, understand, and find. I believe those would be the closest human behaviors that these are replicating. And if you think about it, these are very essential human activities or behaviors in our daily lives as well, right? So let I'm going to share a little more about each of these five categories, what sort of services we have in Azure cognitive services that you know you all can utilize. The first would be the vision APIs. The vision APIs consist of three primary APIs. The first is computer vision, which allows you to analyze content in images and videos. So whether you know it is around finding text, optical character recognition or finding figures, um, humans particularly, for example, cognitive uh, computer vision allows you to anal to detect and analyze this sort of content. Custom vision allows you to customize your image recognition services to fit your business needs. So with, with custom vision, you actually have a very comfortable interface where you can create your own um, sets of images and um, in order to get the best results that you're that you're actually looking for. And then of course we have the face API, which is used to detect and identify people and emotions in images. This is going to be the one that we're going to be using today as well. So I'm going to give a little overview of face API later on. The speech APIs here consist of four major cases. Again, the speech to text service that allows you to transcribe audible speech into readable searchable text. We have the text to speech, which converts text to lifelike speech for more natural interfacing with your solutions. Speech translation is there in order to integrate real time speech translation in your applications, which is a huge accessibility feature because it enables you to get your solution in the hands of people who come from different backgrounds and different regions. So that again, a very powerful feature here. And speaker recognition is a much, much newer service currently in preview. Um, so that basically means that speaker recognition is still being developed and improved and is out there to test. And this allows us to identify and verify people speaking based on, the, on audio. So those are the speech APIs for us. Next up are the language APIs. The first one here that is language understanding, or if some of you have played around with the um, conversational AI, you might recognize the term Louise. So language understanding here allows you to build um, natural language understanding into your applications, your bots or IoT devices, and it does so through something called the Louise framework, which essentially it stands for language understanding here and it allows you to to it enables your applications to have conversational AI. QA Maker allows you to make conversational a conversational QA layer, a question and answer layer over your data, uh, which again is very helpful when you have folks interacting with your solution via a chatbot or forms. Text analytics allows you to detect sentiment, key phrases and name entities within within the text you know that you might have that you send into the api there again and translator here will take your text detect and translate and 
to more than 90 supported languages at this point of time. So a huge, 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 uh, hugely impactful bunch of APIs here as well. Next up are the decision APIs. The first one is the anomaly detector, which identifies potential problems based on a time series data data set. For example, the content moderator API here will allow you to detect potentially offensive and unwanted content that you might need to censor. And the personalizer enables you to create richer, more personalized experiences for your user base or your customers. So, and I believe the last pillar that we have left now is search. Now, the search APIs primarily consist of a variety of Bing related services, which may include new search, image search, web, auto suggest, visual search, and a few more as I've um, shared on the screen here. I have to note that these are different from the Azure cognitive search service that you might have heard of in case you've been experimenting with Azure AI. It is true that cognitive search does utilize cognitive services to some extent, but it is its own independent. Um, service. So please do not um, confuse the two. The search APIs that are a part of cognitive services are primarily focused around Bing related services. So those are the five pillars or categories of um, cognitive services that we have. Now, as mentioned earlier, face API was the one that we're going to be playing around with most. So I'm going to hop on straight and talk a little more about face API now. So the face API um, provides AI algorithms that detect, recognize, analyze human faces in images, and it can be used to support a variety of scenarios. For example, you know, if you're introducing new users by verifying their identity, if you're authenticating users for access control, if you want to redact faces from certain images, Basically, it will allow you to identify as you know, detect images and of and faces and faces and images as well as recognize them. And a make a big uh, customer story that I do want to feature here is Uber. So Uber, in fact, uses the face API for um, authentication and authorization on their platform. And this is, in fact, a huge, huge deal if you think about it, because Uber is now running worldwide. Uh, when it when it comes to their um, transport solution here for all of us. I think a lot of us probably have used it as well. So that is a big use case of face API. Now. I you know we're going to be using face API to understand to detect emotion in faces today as had been mentioned earlier, so without much further ado, I'm going to move towards our live demo as well. If um, you know, if you've uh, uh, if you saw the chat earlier, you would have noticed that I sent over two download links for Visual Studio and .NET. If you have downloaded both of them, that's great. If you have them, perfect. If not, please hop over and um, download them now. For this solution, I'm going to be working on a little Xamarin app that I created, and I'm going to be implementing Face API in that particularly. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hop over to the next screen to show a GitHub link here to you. And after this, we'll just be going off for a second so that I can bring up Visual Studio on my own device as well. Um, in the meantime, I'm just sending over the link. Make sure that you download this and clone this to your um, device as well. Basically, the the repo that I've sent you here is a basic Xamarin app that will allow you to click a picture and just have it visible in your device. Uh, this is going to be helpful because we're going to be using Face API on our own images. Of course, just clicking selfies of us to detect what emotion is most prevalent, right? Most predominant. So it would be lovely if you all could hop over to this GitHub repository and just, you know, open it in Visual Studio or just, you know, clone it and um, we will we'll go through this code and we'll go through what this solution does for us right now. Also, in the meantime, I'm just going to be shifting teams over here on the right side. 
uh, because I'm going to be bringing up my primary other display. So. Which is going to be uh, Teams is just going to be on the right side. Yeah, so if you see me looking here, it means I'm looking at the chat right now. <laughs> and I believe my screen should be up. Yes, there it is. So that is the repository that link that I had shared with all of you. And I would be really grateful if you all could just open it. Click on the button here and clone this on your devices or directly open with Visual Studio. If you've cloned it, that's perfect. Thank you so much for that, Ritwik. And in case again, I shared the links earlier in the chat as well, but in case uh, you don't have Visual Studio or .NET installed, please go ahead and do that now. You can download the community versions um, as that is available for free. And we're good with Visual Studio 2019. Right now we will not be working on the 2022 preview. The 2019 version is good for us. At the same time, it would be good if you can install .NET on your device as well. As mentioned in the chat earlier, I'm going to talk in, about .NET here at this point of time as well. .NET is a free cross-platform open source framework that allows you to build applications and solutions for a variety of platforms such as web, mobile, desktop, games, ML for the cloud, IoT apps. And I'm sure this is all visible here as well on the screen, but it, it really does talk about how powerful .NET is because, um, you know, apart from these platforms, you also have multi language support here available in .NET. You can work with C Sharp, which is an object oriented programming language um, that you can use for um, .NET. We have F Sharp here, uh, which is a functional programming language and Visual Basic, of course, is there as well. Beyond that, we do have um, a standard set of libraries that are available. Um, you know, we have the NuGet package manager, which is one of the largest sources of uh, open source um, packages that you can actually utilize for any language. And we do have the NuGet pack packages that you know we can utilize in our solutions. We're going to be, you know, mobile and desktop are two target platforms that we're going to be working with today because we're going to be working with Xamarin Forms, um, which is a .NET based cross platform app framework, which allows you to build for Android, iOS and Windows. So Xamarin Forms is what we're going to be working with right now. If you've cloned over, you know, uh, the repo, um, what you should see now is a little oops. Oh, there's just a lot of <laughs> things open here. Just a second. All right, so. Once you've cloned over the folder, what you should see is a directory here, um, which you know has a solution file, which has our um, individual um, platform solutions as well as a common code base, which is what Xamarin Forms allows us to do. It allows us to work with a common code base uh, using XAML, XAML, or and along with C Sharp. So that's the basic structure of this. Um, entire solution and if you see the solution and you double click on it, it should directly open in Visual Studio for you. So I hope Visual Studio is. It's, um, it's just loading. Um. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's visible to you. It is loading the solution projects for me right now. Now, since I was working on my local device, um, this shouldn't be a problem for me, but considering that you're cloning, um, you know, considering that you're cloning from my repo, please make sure that um, you hop over, click on tools here in our nav bar up on top, go to new get package manager, click on manage package solution, you know, because we are going to have one or two, um, Packages that we might need to restore, which are going to be very necessary for the current running app. All right. So that's just loading up for me. I'm just going to keep this here as is. I'm going to first take you through the structure of the Xamarin application. We're also going to visit the Azure portal once. 
um, to get our credentials to get our API key. So I'm just first taking you through a little bit of the structure here that we have for our Xamarin app so that you can understand what we're trying to achieve with the solution, right? So as as you know, as you might notice here with the solution, we have a few NuGet packages that are installed. Um, first of course is the .NET Core for you know your universal Windows platform package here, which is a set of packages that you need for building universal Windows platform applications. The .NET, the .NET standard library is a set of standard .NET APIs that are common across all .NET based um, solutions. The Xamarin forms and Xamarin essentials packages are necessary to be able to build Xamarin applications because Xamarin forms is what allows us to build native UIs for iOS, Android, UWP, as well as Mac OS, Tizen and a few more um, platforms like watch OS or Android Wear using a single shared C sharp code base. And along with that, we have Xamarin Essentials, which is a set of essential APIs for Xamarin based applications. So these, of course, would be necessary for any Xamarin application that you that is um, created for iOS, Android and Windows. In case you wouldn't have the Windows in option installed, you wouldn't have the universal Windows platform package here, but you would in any case have the other two. The necessary package that we will have to restore along with these is the media plugin package here that you can see, which has been built by James Montemagno, who is a member of the who of the .NET team here at Microsoft as well. And it is what allows us to click or pick pictures and videos from our solutions. So if you have all of these installed, just running the current solution um, should be able to give you an app that allows you to click a picture and then you know alongside it allows you to you know it'll just show you a little pop up on the screen so i'm going to show the deployment on my local device i am debugging it locally because um, that will allow me to click a picture later on as well when i need my um, when i need my image analyzed to find the predominant emotion all right, so since my device has USB debugging, which you would set up like any other Android device, um, you can see that we have a UI available here that is running. And you know, as I think I might, I'll just close sharing in order to make sure that my screen is a little larger, becomes a little easier to see at least. So I, I hope my, um, my phone screen is visible now. And what it basically says is welcome to face API test and has a button in the middle called capture image, which allows me to just click a little picture of me here. So, you know, as I I've just clicked an image here of me, uh, I can select it and it's going to show that image within my application, which is what we're trying to achieve, at least with the solution that you've just cloned from the repo. And if you click on get emotion right now, it's just going to give you a pop up that says button working. But we're this is exactly where we're going to be adding our logic to understand the emotion here that is present on my face. All right, so I'm just going to bring up my screen once again. All right, and we're going to go start playing around and understanding how exactly this occurred. So. Uh, okay, let me stop debugging for a second. As we look at a solution here that was existing, I'm just going to zoom in once to make sure things are a little more easily readable. When when your Xamarin uh, Forms application starts working, it um, starts from this little file here called app.xml.cs. Um, the app.xml here is the view. XAML stands for extensible app markup language. It is a map markup language that is utilized in um, universal Windows platform applications in Xamarin. And the XAML.cs is, is a code file that is connected with our page here. All right, so when we start this application, what it does is it initializes, you know, just starts up the application and it initializes our main page. Um, dot, the main page class here, which is going to be our landing page, which is the page that opens up for us. 
All right. And as you start the application, you see a content page here with the layout. If you were able to look at my screen, my phone screen earlier, you would have seen a little text called you know, that said welcome to face API test, which was present in a blue frame. Along with that, there was a button for capturing image. And um, as we clicked and captured an image, an image actually loaded up in the middle, which you would be able to see here in this layout. And then later on, we saw another button that um, said get emotion. And the image didn't load up until it was actually captured because we didn't set a source beforehand. Neither did the button. The button is because this button particularly because it was set to be invisible until um, the code was captured. And only once you know we actually captured our code was it did it become visible for us. So you know if you look at the constructor for this uh, page that I have, and just by the way. Uh, the content page here is connected with uh, the main page.xaml.cs class here through this little variable. And you know, if you change this, it would end up being connected to a different content page, for example. So that's actually what connects this page with our um, with the entire other class that I showed earlier. And as as I go through here, um, so you know with our constructor we just initialized um, again this entire uh, page and I set our um, images source to null so that you know we wouldn't just have any random value up there. You know whenever it initializes we'd rather just keep it empty considering that we haven't clicked an image. Um, the get emotion button that we saw was set and you know to be invisible and be disabled at the start because until we have an image up there, we don't really want that button to a non functional button. That's not going to help us to be running right now. The capture image button here that you know we had was connected to a class here. Uh, it the, an event, you know this this class here. The, sorry, this function here is triggered whenever you know you tap on that button and that is actually denoted here by the clicked the variable that you know that that sets uh, the name of the function that is going to be triggered and this again is able to find the function easily because it's uh, our uh, content page here is connected to the class um, so you know as um, as we go to this class what this entire piece of code does is it uses the media plugin the xam dot plugin dot media and you get package that I showed you earlier to click a picture of us and this little function, you know this. That's what this function does. So the first thing is doing is it's checking if a camera is available in the device or if capturing photos is supported. And the next thing it does is is um, this it, it, it uses an asynchronous call to capture an image of um, from the camera of the device. And what we're doing is we've set the default camera as camera device dot front now what it's supposed to do is it's automatically supposed to select our front camera. However, with um, the media plugin, it's it's been it's not been always perfect with Android. Particularly, it works well um, at least with iOS. So that's what it's supposed to do. We've set the photo size as medium. We have a variety of um, set photo sizes. We use medium in order to ensure that our image size isn't too large because we're going to be using this file later on. Um, we do set a directory for and I've just called it face API test. You can call it whatever you want because and this is a directory that's actually going to be available in your photos. So because because our um, our exam are the the application here, at least for Android, we've ensured that uh, the paths that uh, these, these images are set to um, are actually in in uh, in the pictures or the videos directories that we have existent, and that has been pre-set up for you. Um, in case you ever decide to start by scratch with the media plugin, there is very comfortable documentation that you will directly get as you install the package for the very first time. We are setting the name as captured or JPEG. Um, you can set it as whatever you want, and in case you capture multiple auto updates, the name 
based on the number of images. This is not necessarily going to be a big worry for us because even after the image is saved, it does ensure that the name is updated to whatever the final name is set. And we're keeping save to album is true so that we can utilize this file path later on in case we ever need to. So if you know, of course, if the file is null, there's no image, it's going to do absolutely nothing here. But if we do have a file that is captured, it is going to save the captured image as a file of the media file type. Now this is uh, a type from the media plugin that we installed and it is used for media file representations. There is a benefit to using media file over just the um, traditional Xamarin's form image class that I will tell a little later as we start actually working with um, the face API. And you know, I've saved the file path here as well um, in case we need it later on. And as soon as as soon as you know our um, image is captured, we just get back the stream, you know, um, of back from our file and we form our image from that. So as, as soon as you know an image is captured, the stream of bytes is sent back to our solution and that image is visible, which is exactly what happened. As soon as I captured it appeared in the middle of my screen. So that's how that happened. And once you know our image is captured, that's when the get emotion um, button is made visible and enabled. So that was a gist of you know what is already happening in our solution. Now, in order to ensure that um, we're able to use the face API to get to for our emotion analysis, we do need an emotion resource on on um, Azure, right? We need an API key. So let's hop over once you know in the meantime to our browser so that we can open the Azure portal. Also, thanks a lot for sending the GitHub link in Raghav. Um, really appreciated. So the next thing that we're going to do is hop over to the Azure portal. Um, in case you're a student and you do not have credits, we do have the Azure for Students offer, which allows you to avail $100 worth of Azure credits for a year. I am sending in the link for that in the chat, so you can try that out. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to hop over, go ahead and log into my Azure portal once. All right. I do have my credentials saved. So that was a little quicker for me. <laughs> All right, so our Azure portal is coming up. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, we have this nice little dashboard up here with any recent resources that you've been using, as well as a few Azure resources that are kept up here. I have a little notification for the credits that I have. And then, of course, we have a list of favorites and all resources that you know you can check out on the left. For now, we just want to go ahead and create a resource for ourselves. Um, even as you click on create a resource, we see a variety of resources before jumping into that. Yes, uh, we're working with Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition. That is good enough for this solution. Yeah. All right, back to Azure. So as, as you see these categories, you know, you'll see we have AI plus machine learning on top already, which has uh, the face um, resource mentioned here. It also has a variety of other um, offers that are available in the Azure marketplace. And beyond that, you know, you will be able to see various different solutions, you know, whether you hop over to compute and see VMs, Azure functions, um, whether you go to databases and find SQL databases, Cosmos DB, Postgres or MySQL databases, you know, there's, there's a huge number of solutions that are available. On, on Azure and you know you'll click on these find a variety and even more once you once you hop over to the Azure marketplace for now though we need just our face API. So I'm going to go ahead click on create. All right and within create we'll see we have a few of these options available for us. Mm, you can select a resource group that if you want to if you want to create a new one like I am going to do now. We can just um, do that as well. I'm just going to call it um, Samarin Face API. OK. For the region, I will keep it to Central India since I see it as the closest region for my location. 
and and that tends to be a big advantage if you know if your um, if if your resources closest to your location so in my case i'm going to keep it at central india the name for this i guess i can keep the same as i mentioned earlier xamarin face api i do hope this is available and as you can see it is available oops seems like the subdomain is already used no worries i'll just rename it so you know it's it's necessary to make sure that um, the name is is all right because the this tent this is a unique name so even if it's not being used on your device but generally it would be a good idea you know to rename it and make sure it is something that is fully that that's totally unique for the pricing tier for now at least we can use the free tier but however in larger enterprise use cases when you need a, a larger number of calls you can use the standard one as well which allows 10 calls per second i'm going to go with the free tier for now next up we're going to check out the other settings as well um in this case i do want my my resource to be available on all networks if you have if you want to use private networks you can do so as well by selecting you know selected networks and just based on your use case for now although all networks is good for us i don't want a system assigned identity for resource access for the time being so i'm going to leave it at off tags of course um, you know are name value pairs that help you categorize resources better so i'm just going to maybe you know i'm going to keep name and i'll mention value as face api the resource of course is a cognitive services service based resource so that's already mentioned i'm just going to leave it as face api for now uh, but you can you can categorize and name it as per whatever you feel is comfortable next up we're just going to go ahead and review you know we've set up already and it do, it does have the terms and conditions here um, for the azure marketplace all the settings you've selected already and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and create that so it is deploying this resource for me all right Yep, deployment is in progress. As soon as deployment completes, it's gonna it's gonna um, let us know here as well that the deployment is successful. So you know, once we're through with that, we're just gonna take the API key and we'll go back to our app solution to start actually building with the face API. All right, so our deployment is complete. You know, you can find and download the details as well. And you know all of the all of that is something you can check. So you can check out the operation details here. And for now, though, we'll just quickly hop over to our resource to check it out. All right. The thing we really need right now is our API key. So I'm just gonna go here, copy my API key. The endpoint, if you've seen in our um, solution, is is already set, which should be good to go. But in the API key field here, make sure that you add your API key. All right. For now, I'm just going to quickly just go ahead and copy paste it. In case any of you need to try it out for the session, I'll send over this key and because it's a free tier key, I will disable it later on I mean, in a day or so. So if you want to play around, try and test it using this key, please feel free to do so. So I've sent over the key in the chat as well, and you can always go ahead and try it out. Now that we have our, um, you know, our solution ready, we can continue building and setting up our app here. So what I'm going to do next is, is I'm going to start. Um, OK, one second. Yeah. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this little display alert. And I am going to call you know I, I guess you know i can actually just work within um, this solution that we have already i do like to keep my entire um, detection that my detect emotion function in a sep it, as separate from this so i'm just gonna go ahead and create another function here for us so and this again is going to be an asynchronous function so we'll call this as detect emotion all right. 
for now we don't need any variables in this that's not a worry first things first let's just go ahead and initialize that little credentials class that we have so you know good thing about e sharp we can just use var for our little work and we're gonna go ahead and i'm gonna The reason it's not actually coming up is because that um, that class hasn't been referenced. But the good thing about Visual Studio is is that you know if you press Control dot or just right click and uh, check quick actions, you'll see that it has that suggestion for us available. So as soon as I click on that, you'll see that this um, reference gets added up here, which which makes development pretty convenient for us. So first things first, we'll quickly hop over, you know, create this resource for us. Next thing that we need to do is ensure that, you know, we have the client SDK for the face API installed. Now the face API client SDK is actually a pre-release. So what you're going to do is we're going to make sure that um, we include pre-release here. Click on cognitive services vision dot face and we go ahead and, you know, as as it loads, we're gonna we're gonna install the preview that the pre-release SDK that we have. In case your whatever platform that you choose to build with later on does not have the client SDK, you can always use the REST API, which is gonna be visible in the document that we have for um, for um, well cognitive services. So it, it's just taking a second to search for. Um, this little new get package. Um, in the meantime, I'll just have a look and see in case we have any queries and I don't think that's the case in the meantime. Yeah. So we're just going to download the latest pre release. All right, and we're going to install this for our entire solution. As you can see, it's from the output at the bottom. It's using the package manager to install um, the, this package for all our um, solutions here. That is the Android, iOS, and UW, uh, the Windows solution, along with our um, common code base. I'm just going to accept that. Um, the name of the package is just cognitive services dot vision dot face. You can search that for your device. That should be. Yeah, in case you're not able to find it, make sure you click on include pre release up here. That is going to be necessary in order to find this resource. So it seems like this should be installed for us. Now, all right. So once it once it's installed, you can actually find it on the install tab here on, a, on your NuGet solution. I'm just gonna close app.. For now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So now that you know we have the face API package installed for us, the next thing I'm gonna do is create a face client for us. And this is gonna be a new face client. Once again, it's it's not visible because you know we need to reference it. Um, I'm gonna do this using the new. You know we need to add our API service client credentials as well in order to ensure that this actually functions. So I'm gonna add um, you know the credentials here as we initialize face client, and this is exactly why. We had our class created earlier because we're just going to get this API key. All right. And the next thing that we need to do here is, of course, reference the endpoint as well. So the endpoint here is also going to be present in our credentials. And that should be good enough for us. Let me see what type the client is. You know, it's a, it's a comfortable thing that you know this allows us to do. I'm just going to slightly zoom out. 
Um, now that you know where we need, of course, uh, we need to get back a list of our, you know, the face API, well, the faces that are there. I'm going to create a little variable called response list, and this is going to have our API, and we're going to make an asynchronous call using our client to, you know, the face API, and we're going to use the, the detect with stream async function. This is exactly why I had stored our file earlier to another little um, variable that is uh, available on the class level called captured image because we're going to be using this captured image. Um, the captured image. Well, very uh, the variable here to get back a stream of data. And, and this is going to be very helpful for us. We, we're going to need this. Next thing we need to do is set up our. The face attributes we want back in our case, you know, and when, when we create this, we just set up. We create add a little class name here, which. Um, well, you know, which which has the face. Attribute type, and this is not again going to be visible because the package we had has a reference to the face API models that we need. So once again, we're going to get back those models and utilize those. So you know, as, as I did that, you know, you see that we have this variable working. We're going to go ahead and initialize, the, you know, just create, add, add a little, the attribute type that we want back from this, this list at least, and that is face attribute emotion. You can always add all the other um, attributes as well. That's totally all right. You can do that in this case. However, since we only need the motion attribute, um, it's going to be all right for us. Now what this does is it sends back a list of um, faces considering you know that we are using it for just our selfie. We need to do one more thing and maybe save this face here. And in order to do that, we can quickly just you know get the first or default um, object, the face object that you know it gets back. So I'm just going to go ahead, response list, and um, I will add the first or default new function. Now, this is a part of uh, this is available in the link queue class, the system.link queue, which refers to language integrated queries. Um, amazing uh, feature in C sharp makes working with lists um, very easy. It's It's a great aspect. So you know we're going to do that. So you know if you run just this much of the function, you're going to see that we get back the response for the face, um, the the data, which which is great. Uh, next up, however, we need to find the predominant function as well, for which I'm going to have a separate very uh, separate function that I'm just going to quickly create. Um, so I'm going to call that find predominant. Function. All right, and within this, we're just going to use the emotion, uh, which is a part of the face API models, and I'm going to name that as emotion as well. Because you know it doesn't return a value, but it's going to do that. In order to get this function running, we're also going to use another class that is available in C Sharp, um, which is going to get to that, which is called the property info class which and this is actually what's going to enable us to you know utilize all and just directly work with all the values and all the types of values that we have in our object because the response that the emotion response that we get back is is, is present as an object rather than a dictionary so we're going to utilize and leverage the property info class to get back all the properties in this object all right I'm just going to create initialize this as null, but uh, we're going to leverage this feature, you know, as we continue building. So next up, you know, we have we're going to create another variable called emotion values, which is going to be of the emotion type, you know, and we're going to get. All the properties. It returns all public properties in that current type that we've set. All right. And th this again is, is necessary for us because. Um, you know. As as we. 
get back these properties each each of our variables that are present in the emotion object that we get back we're going to be able to trade their you know practically you know as a key value pair essentially that's how we'll be able to treat each of these so emotion values here is going to allow us to iterate through each of those properties so we're going to create a little for each property info again this is this is a function that you know this is what will allow us to iterate through each of these emotion types and figure out which is the largest um, value that we have present you know the la the largest emotion that is present so emotion values is set here i'm just going to have this now another value the variable that we'll have is type because this one is double because we're going to be using this value to get back the exact value that is returned for each of the emotions that we have here. All right, so I'm going to type cause this as a double value. Using, you know, oh, sorry, I one second. I'm just going to keep this as property. Using the property um, variable that, you know, we have here that our iterator here essentially um, we're going to get back. The val each of these, you know, the value for each of these emotions in our emotion variable that we use, we send into into this function. All right, we're going to check if. Value is more than max. Max again is that variable, you know, that we set earlier up there. If. if the case, we're going to just set the value of max as value and we're going to set prop that again we created up there as property so you know what this is what we're doing here in, the, in this function essentially is is that we're finding which of the emotions has the largest value and uh, one you know this entire function helps us find that right so as as that is done we're just going to go and return the name of the property we're going to make sure we convert it to a string format uh, because this name in itself is a member info name for the property. So we're going to return this in a string format. And what this is going to do is it's going to return the, the, the find. OK, I should have just named this as emotion in my excitement here. I practically just named it as function. Yeah, find predominant emotion is what it is. It's going to find the emotion with the largest value out of all of the emotions present there. So that's our predominant emotion, right? Now. Another wire predominant. Because we're going to call this function here. Um, using the face data that we have. So you know among face we have face attributes, which was that list we had and then among that we have emotion. Since you know we were getting this response back, right? So now that you know we have this um, created, the only thing left to do is display so i'm gonna do that in the form of a little alert and i'm gonna just say well it happens in a format of title message and you know just the cancel button so i'm gonna call that predominant emotion we're gonna use predominant here that's what we're gonna return and my cancel button the string on that is just gonna be okay all that's left now is really just to call the detect function here. So I'm going to await the detect emotion function now. And I believe we should pretty much we good. Oh, the reason it's not able to. to be created as a task. Sorry about that. Yeah, so you know tasks can be awaited. Just a void is called as a synchronous function. So now that we have this, our solution should actually be ready. So I'm going to take my screen back off because we're going to test. You know, actually, no, I'll keep my screen on for a second. 
because I want to show one thing here. You know, as as we did, as you know, we get this response. I want to show the sort of response we get back. I'm just going to bring this up. It's going to deploy the little app for us. In the meantime, I'm checking at the chat. Um, my coordinates. Sorry, can you elaborate on that, please? I'm not 100% sure what my coordinates here would mean. This is going to debug on my phone right now. That's what I'm doing. Because I've set up USB debugging, so I'm just going to use my phone to directly debug that way. I can capture my image and, you know, use, use that in our solution. And I'll make sure to push this to our um, Git repo as well. So as soon as this is functioning, you can actually hop back to the same repo whenever you want to try out this code. The key, of course, will not function later on because I will disable it. But you know, from the meantime, at least you can try it out. It's a free key, so not a worry. So yeah, the app is back running. I'm just going to capture my image once quickly. All right. And as you can see that, you know, my image is captured here, right? So I'm just going to click on get emotion and we're going to see what sort of a response we get back in our solution. So it's it's creating an output um, and as you see, I'd set a breakpoint here at response list because at this point of time, our response list would have actually been um, populated with with the response from the face API. So if you can look at my screen right now and you see response list here, you'll see we have a value that is stored which has our face return and the coordinates of the face in on, on this um, you know on this image. And then within the attributes, since you know we hadn't called a lot of these, but you can see that you know age, accessories, facial hair, gender, glasses, all of these are variables that you can get back. Uh, we see emotions has a class, and you can see that the value here is is contempt is 0 0.001 and happiness is 0 0.999. So the predominant emotion is happiness, right? And you can see that this is the response we get. These are the eight emotions that we get back. So as I go ahead and I just continue this. You can see now on my app here, I hope it should be a little more visible now that we get back a little display alert that says my predominant emotion here is happiness, which is accurate. So that's our little solution with the face API. Yeah, that, that was a ton of fun. I, I definitely liked working with that. Now, I'm going to bring our teams back here because I want to bring back um, my presentation once for a quick second. I'm going to uh, push this code here directly to our um, to the repo that we had, you know, um, in a second. So I'll just remove the key from there once. I'm just going to add Azure. Azure. Services is, I'm just pushing this um, code over to the GitHub repo that we had. So that, you know, you all this the link that we had earlier. You all can just use that to understand this solution and keep trying it out. So I'm just pushing it, and you know, as as now you know. You should be able to find the code on our repo. So just hopping back to the presentation for a quick second, we have just a little bit of content because with the solution that I have here, what I had done was I had made another fun little application that kind of continued on to what we were doing here. I hope my screen is up and running now. Is yes. the presentation visible? All right, thank you. So. I actually kind of continued on this solution a fun little thing called a social modifier, which modifies your selfie based on the predominant emotion. Then you can go ahead and share it with people. So I built this like I guess a couple of weekends back and you know as as soon as you click a selfie, it's going to emojify your picture um, and it's got a few preset um, 
emojis that you can use inside and that github is also available so i can send over the link for that right now and the best part about that app is it's up there in my releases so you can go ahead and try that and play around if you'd like it's i mean the android release is up there i unfortunately couldn't deploy for ios because i don't have an apple device this one's there for ios and android particularly so you can go ahead find it in the github releases and try it out i'm sending over the link for this in the chat and for the apk if you want that for the apk the link is should also be coming now you can get the APK from the second link. That, that, that was definitely one that I had a lot of fun with. So, you know, that was the fun solution I had. And there, that's it for our session. I'd love to take any questions you all have right now. And in case any of you are looking for that um, repository once again, um, the code has been committed and it should be pushed about now. It's, it's being pushed right now, so um, you should be able to find it on that repository. Yeah, the, the code is now in the repository, so you can find it here. So I guess the first question that I have is from Neeraj. Is this XM plugin media freeware or is it paid? Totally free. It is an open source library. Any packages that you find from the NuGet package manager, um, you know, the packages themselves are all open source. It's only when we have an SDK like cognitive services that, you know, you would need to get credentials from from Azure, which of course would have certain criteria so like because in our case you know with my account i was able to create a free key um th that being said there are of course paid variants and you know of of the same resource available as well so the key while of course is a different matter uh the package in itself is available for free and for the time being if you don't have an azure account and you still want to play around I sent over a key that's free, so I'll keep this up and running. You can use this whenever you want. I will not take it down. Actually, I was thinking about it. since it's a free key, you can use this key whenever you want. All right. Thanks a lot for that, Raghav. Uh, do we have any other queries as well? There are a couple of questions, Aditya. Oh, all right. I just check the just, um, So there is question from Neeraj. Yeah, so Neeraj's question here was around the cognitive services package and the media plugin, right? So I just covered those. Um, beyond that, all right. Share an example where cognitive services is still an exploratory. Um, Santosh, do you want to come off mute and maybe ex uh, explain, elaborate on that question a little more in the senses what you mean by exploratory? Uh, I mean, in case you mean exploratory as something that you know Microsoft is still building on, then yes, the the speaker recognition feature is still um, being built and being worked on at the moment. And what that does is it enables our developer to to identify people based on um, sets of audio. So that is one service that is um, being built and developed right now. Um, apart from that, in case uh, you have any other intent, I mean, if exploratory means something else for you, you can just elaborate and ah that way. All right, so when you know we talk about critical areas where cognitive well, co cognitive services suppo is supposed to be a more general set um, that you know is designed for a mass of developers. So the moment any of these services moves into a more speci specific use case, for example, then that is a place where you would want uh, custom ML models as well, right? That you are building on your own, um, and as you're done have the ML Studio, it has 
the offerings available that enable you to do that. But cognitive services in itself is a more general set of APIs rather than um, a more dense collection for every single use case that you could think of. I hope that helps. Any other questions we have here? Yeah. Otherwise, even if you know you don't have something in mind right now, but you would want to reach out to me later on to discuss these, um, you can always do so via LinkedIn and Twitter. And I've sent those over in, our, in the chat right now as well. So you can just click on, on reach out and chat with me. And you know, if you want to connect, just mention that you found me from this session and we'll quickly connect. Oh, Neera, that's it's awesome that you got it running. Be sure to, you know, share about it and share on Twitter and um, get feedback from folks because all of these ideas have so much that you can actually try and do, right? I was able, to, I have kind of worked on that emojifier, but you could use this detection to, you know, maybe create a larger set of data and better understand someone's emotional health. So there's always a lot of use cases for each of these ideas and projects, and it's always great to collaborate and work and learn with each other, but it's great you worked along, tried it out, and um, had fun building this. Um, do we have any other questions? Thanks for joining Nishant. Um, Rashmit, I guess then in that case we can wrap up. Yeah, I think we don't have any other questions. So thank you Aditya so much for the session and thank you all for joining us today. Please feel free to scan the QR code which is displayed on the screen and do the event check in and please give us the feedback about today's session. It will help us to choose our topics that better suit our audiences. Also, please visit our Microsoft Reactor Bengaluru Meetup page for more upcoming session. Thank you all once again and enjoy the rest of your evening. Have a great evening, you all. See ya. Thanks, Vivek.